Hola, YouTubers. Uh, long time no see. I know it's been like, uh, I don't know, three months or something like that. Check it out. I don't have to wear glasses. Well, I have to wear contacts, but they are a world better, in my opinion, uh, than wearing glasses. You know, you don't have this big discrepancy between your what's in front of you and your peripheral vision. Um, so I love them. Uh, Therapy is going extremely well, so my eyes are doing much, much better. And to be completely honest with you guys, I was so starved. I hadn't been able to consume, you know, any content for really anything on a screen, cell phone, computer, gaming, for, you know, over a year, basically. So I've been spending my time back <laughs> just gaming. I got uh, an Xbox One X. I'm going to do a video on that and kind of the current state of gaming very, very soon. At least I intend to do that. Um, I don't want to lie to you guys, but, um, you know, I got a bunch of stuff on the, on the back burner that I want to get out. I just, I have a limited amount of time I can spend, you know, looking at the screens. And, uh, like I say, I've been so starved for, you know, playing games, watching movies, watching TV, doing anything entertainment wise. Um, and I'm having to, you know, balance that with, with some stuff for work as well. Trying to get a mix of, uh, you know, working on computers, um, because it's, it's good pay for me and also just doing manual labor, which is not necessarily good pay, but it's outside. It's better for my visual system, at least in this current state. So that's kind of the introduction to, you know, where I'm at currently. If you guys were curious, if not, then whatever. But, um, this video is about this chip. Now, uh, you can all see I got a new monitor back there. I think it's an absolute monster. I might do a video on that too. Um, but uh, I, I will uh, show you guys uh, my stuff later on. But I built this uh, Ryzen 5 2400G system for a friend recently. And I used a lot of the recommended parts from um, Unboxed Hardware, uh, Hardware Unboxed. I never get the, the name of that channel right. But uh, the guy over there, Steve, does a phenomenal job and he made some recommendations on some components and I, I, I largely used a lot of the things that he recommended uh, for instance the the little uh, you know it's like a 65 watt OEM cooler that comes with 2400 G isn't really adequate uh, for overclocking it's fine at stock speeds but um, I did go with the, the uh, Gamma Max uh, Gamma Max uh, 200 T Cooler, single radiator, single fan, couple of uh, direct connect, you know, uh, direct contact, uh, copper heat pipes, and nothing special, but it does a really good job of cooling down this CPU, and um, was able to get it with literally no um, voltage, you know, added voltage whatsoever. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but I didn't actually tweak the voltages whatsoever in terms of a manual um, you know, like a set voltage for the CPU or for the GPU, any kind of, uh, uh you know, when you, you, you say, I want to have a, a, a plus variance of whatever it is. I did literally nothing, uh, in terms of a voltage regulation or, 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 or over volting to get more performance out of this chip at all. So the, uh, GPU is still running at 1.1 volts. And the CPU is variable uh, depending on the P state that it's currently in. But uh, I think Steve mentioned this in one of his videos over there again at uh, Hardware Unboxed. But um, he mentioned that there's some variation. And a couple, couple videos I've seen have mentioned this. Even when you set, let's say you set in the BIOS, um, the board that I use, which is very important, and I set in this BIOS of the uh, MSI Tomahawk Plus, uh, this is a B350, uh, obviously an AM4 socket board, but I set this, um, just the standard uh, base clock of 100 times 39 multiplier, so 3.9 gigahertz, and again, I didn't really set anything uh, or change anything with, with regard to the, the voltage for the CPU, and it runs just butter. 
Um, it's crazy, there is still, when you go into Windows, you load up a program like CPU-Z, you will still see some, some minor fluctuations there in clock speed. Sometimes it'll go down to, you know, 3.8 gigahertz. Um, sometimes it'll go as high as 3.95 gigahertz. And it manages to, uh, to be able to drop the core voltage really, really, really low, down to like 0.35 volts. In certain in certain cases and I've seen it go as high you know total chip power consumption as high as like 1.45 um, I don't know if that is uh, solely the CPU or if that includes the GPU component as well uh, but I'm assuming that's total power draw of this APU but regardless uh, set it to 3.9 gigahertz on all four cores eight threads um, which is another reason I chose the 2400 G over the 2200 G 2200G is a phenomenal, phenomenal chip. If you just want budget gaming, you can overclock that and you can get very, very close to the 2400G in terms of gaming performance, at least in the vast majority of titles that aren't really CPU bottlenecked by having only four you know, physical CPU cores. The Ryzen you know, cores are, are really good. Um, so it shouldn't be a problem. That's a phenomenal, phenomenal value. But for my buddy uh, wanting to do gaming and also wanting to do productivity work some light video editing, rendering, um, you know, image manipulation, uh, very, very light, you know, super low polygon, but 3D modeling nonetheless. Um, you know, having the, the, the eight logical cores that the 2400G offers him um, and the Vega graphics for, for gaming is really, really a compelling package. But um, one thing I really wanted to let you guys know that, that blew my mind and I didn't even know it was possible. Um, you're going to have to have a board that has three video outputs to accommodate this. But the 2400G, and I'm assuming the 2200G as well, support iFinity. So they literally support, and I'll show you on the screen up here, some footage of him and I playing some games. Um, we played Shadow of Mordor, we played the new Assassin's Creed, and uh, the titles that support iFinity support you know surround display essentially will actually play and they played fairly well shadow of mordor as you can see runs extremely well um and that is not the lowest settings that's at 1080p there is a uh, dynamic resolution scaler turned on to kind of keep the target of 30 frames a second um so you know obviously if you're staring at a wall um you may actually be getting a full 5760 by 1080, which is like 6 million pixels, which is absolutely friggin' nuts. Um, even on an overclocked 2400G, you're getting like 2.5 teraflops. Um, and of course, you're using system memory, which the system memory that I used, um, again, Steve recommended over there. This is only an 8 gigabyte kit. It's 2 times 4. He does have 4 slots on that board. You can always toss in another, you know, 8 gigs, 16 gigs, whatever he wants. But um, this is 3,000 megahertz, and it's, it's uh, you know, for an Intel platform. But this memory, this RipJaws 4 G-Skill memory, looks identical to the G-Skill Flare X in terms of just, you know, its cosmetic appearance, the heat sink, spreaders, etc. cetera. And um, I think that it actually is. It's uh, got to be Samsung B-Dye memory. It's rated at 3,000 uh, megahertz. But as soon as I popped it in that board, I turned it on. I guys, I spent one, one attempt in the BIOS, the UEFI, UEFI, at an overclock, and I set, you know, I didn't change the base clock. It's at 100. I, I put the multiplier at 39, so 3.9 gigahertz for the CPU. I put the uh, RAM at 3200 megahertz. Put the GPU at 1550. Turned it back on and it works like a charm and I was in there for all of 20 seconds. So uh, phenomenal overclocking experience with this board, this chip, and this memory. Um, I'll link them all down below. You guys can check it out. And um, I just wanted to let you know, again, my thoughts on it and how amazing it is to see iFinity running on an APU. Just in case you guys were curious as to what other components I use in this guy's system, you can always get a cheaper, you know, off-brand or you know whatever uh, but I did use a Samsung uh, Evo 850 which if you use an Evo 850 you know uh, 
eight, an 850 Pro. Regardless of which one of those you use, you're essentially maxing out the SATA connection. You're getting like 550 read, 550 write, and you may get you know uh, you know fractionally you know margin of error type performance you know increases with a Pro over an Evo version or or the new you know 860 or or, or, or 950 or whatever it is um, SATA based Samsung SSDs. But this is plenty fast, plenty big. It's a quarter, quarter terabyte for his boot drive and whatever games he wants to load up very quickly. Obviously, you know, miscellaneous programs, um, Photoshop, video editing, stuff like that, all done on the SSD, plenty of space for that. And you can always upgrade if he wants to later on. He has an M.2 slot, so he can toss in, you know, if he wanted to, some, you know, lower latency, you know, higher, higher, uh, you know, bandwidth um, uh, storage in the future. I also used, again, recommended by old Steve over there, uh, the Seasonic, which is a great brand. This is not a uh, you know 80 plus gold or platinum, 80 plus bronze. <clears throat> They're still you know very efficient, very reliable, five year warranty. I used an old uh, I think it's a NXZT case I had lying around that I'd used for my systems way back in the old Phenom two days. Um, I think I had at one point in time I got like a I don't want to say a Pentium 4. I don't know if it was that old, uh, but maybe a Core 2 uh, quad-core CPU at some point. But um, I'd used that case, and uh, it had some had a really good uh, airflow setup. It had a 120 that pulled, um, you know, cool air over the hard drives in the solid state. It has a uh, at least it still had in there a 120 that pulled out of the back, and it also had a 120 that pulled in on an acrylic side panel. To get that nice uh, air airflow, uh, you know, over over his CPU cooler, which again is what's cooling his 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 GPU on the same chip as well. So very important that you have good cooling for these things um, to maintain those high overclocks. And um, his runs like an absolute charm. One other thing I wanted to note with this gaming setup that we set up, that I set up rather for him, um, is. With the APUs, and I've heard I've heard Steve mention this, I've heard other guys mention this, you know, it's all the same RAM. You don't have a dedicated graphics card with, you know, dedicated memory on the card for graphics specifically. Your system RAM is being used as VRAM, and you can go into your UEFI BIOS and you can you can say, hey, you know, I want to allocate up to two gigabytes of uh, you know my system RAM for just video, just to act as VRAM. Now that is, in, in a lot of opinions that I've seen, and in my personal opinion, it's a waste. You know, I would, especially if you only have eight gigabytes, eight gigabytes of RAM as opposed to 16 or higher than that, you really don't want to cut off, you know, a fourth of your memory um, when you're running with your web browser, stuff like that. Uh, you know, not a game. You've got memory allocated that you could be using for, uh, you know, other applications. That your system has reserved for for video for video RAM only, and so uh, I found the sweet spot to be 512 megabytes. Certain games like the new Shadow of Mordor, whatever it is, uh, wouldn't run with it set to two, uh, 256. They needed 512 megabytes, um, and that was kind of the happy spot that we found. You could run whatever you wanted with those settings. Regular 1080p gaming on that. Yeah, I thought was was very very good titles that use um, you know Vulcan in particular. If you're running you know a single display, uh, I think you could probably even pull off 1440p gaming. Maybe have to use some resolution scaling in there at some point. But um, I know we ran Wolfenstein. I went over and helped him optimize a few of his titles. He was kind of struggling with uh, you know optimizing his graphical settings, and I went over and showed him kind of how to use. Uh, different tools like fraps to see his frame rate, uh, see how much headroom that you have available, and eventually get that to be a little bit over 30 in most games as his target. Uh, then to enable V-Sync, obviously to kind of prevent frame tearing, uh, and also you know you want to maintain a consistent 30 FPS so you don't have any input lag. He didn't have, didn't have a free sync monitor, so um, we did that for Wolfenstein 2, the New Order or the New Colossus, whatever it is, and. Um, you know, Vulcan API made everything on high, full HD, and the game ran 
buttery smooth with V-Sync on, locked at 30 FPS, and it looked absolutely great. Um, you know, Shadow of Mordor, or whatever the latest, you know, Lord of the Rings title is, looked fantastic, even on three screens at 1080p. Running, you know, again, you know, 5760 by, by 1080, 6 million pixels, you're three quarters of the way to 4K there, and it still ran exceptionally well, uh, albeit with dynamic resolution scaling in play, um, trying to keep that target 30 FPS lock, but that was not at low settings, that was at medium and high settings, which is crazy. Um, the Assassin's Creed game, the very latest one of those, was the most challenging game to run by far, and you can see that there is some, you know, lower frame rates in that game when running in Ifinity mode. Uh, you know, titles that, that don't support Ifinity or haven't supported Ifinity in the past, uh, id Tech 6 engine games like Wolfenstein, like Doom, aren't going to magically support, you know, three monitors with one of these APUs or for that matter with any, you know, other uh, ATI radio and graphics card in the market today. So um, uh, I think there's some other titles out there that don't support three monitors, some UWP titles, uh, and, they, and they may now support it. But uh, I was absolutely shocked and astonished to see just how good the performance was, um, not only for gaming, but in applications. I mean, he didn't have... If you go into Windows Power Options, you can go in there and turn on like fast startup, which I like to keep turned off. It's almost like sleep mode where it keeps some files um, in like, you know, a, a page file or, or swap, you know, memory. And, and, and when you do Windows updates, sometimes it can cause problems with Windows Update. So I keep those two turned off and I had them turned off for him. And even so, and even on a SATA-based SSD, not an NVMe M.2 SSD, the guy's system still booted up in like, you're talking 10 seconds, literally. I mean, from, from turning the button on, that's with the BIOS screen, and then it's like, you know, hi, I'm Windows, I'm, I'm, I'm awesome. So really, really, really impressed with these chips. Um, phenomenal thermal thermals uh, with that uh, GameMax 200T cooler. And um, just really, really, really impressed with this Ryzen 5 2400G CPU all around. Again, in terms of productivity work, he's able to do, you know, uh, 1080p video editing. He can even do higher than that if he wants to wait a little bit longer, obviously. But um, the guy's got a ton of room to grow. He's got an AM4 socket that will accept, you know, if you want to put an 8-core, 16-thread, you know, basically 4.5 gigahertz monster in there. Uh, you know, come next month, he can go for it. He can drop in, uh, you know, a, a, a brand new uh, Navi or, uh, you know, upcoming NVIDIA or, or, or AMD GPU. One of the current ones, thank God the prices are starting to fall from those things, from all these crypto miners uh, and the kind of that whole market crashing. I'm so happy to see that because, um, you know, PC people have just been getting hosed and the availability of GPUs has been horrible which has made these even more appealing. But um, anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Uh, it's been great to see you again, and I will see you very soon uh, once again in the next one. Talk to you later. Peace.